justify why it is you, a minister for transport, who is answering matters on PPP. The letter was addressed to Mr. Mudavadi. At that time, he was covering the entire cabinet. Who was the minister responsible who should be answering these questions? Is it you or the minister for finance? You are a stranger in these proceedings. The minister to answer these questions is the minister for finance, not you. I put it to you that you are trying to scam us in your response. You have no standing to address this committee. And I would ask the chair to demand that the minister for finance, who is the, who is the entity re recognized by law under the PPP, comes to address this committee on the questions we have asked. Yes, uh, Honorable CS, it's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. I never engaged with you. And I would like to thank you for honoring the summons of the committee. Some of you are members sometimes give us troubles coming here. And so I'm most honored for that. Now I'd like to begin from your document which you gave us, that's that your response, that's paragraph three, where you say this, the proposal, the proposed concession is anchored in the Public-Private Partnership Act of 2021. That statement locates these proceedings in that act. And my question is, under that act, do you have the locals to answer any questions? Who is the cabinet secretary anticipated under section two of that act? That's my first question. Secondly, I would like to reiterate what the chair stated in passing, like it was like, like, but it's a fundamental issue that your documents are crafted in a language that says that the Adani deal is done. We will, we will, we shall, we will, we are. It's already concluded. I don't know why you are giving that impression that this deal is already concluded. Uh, I want now to take you to the law. You have given us here a process where you have said the uh, uh, bullet points on how a PPP works. And I put it to you that you are trying to mislead the Senate. This step one to step 20 and so forth is not how the PPP Act works. First of all, the PPP Act does not oust the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act, which provides for direct procurement, privately initiated proposals, restructuring, restricted bidding, and competitive bidding. You have told this committee, in answer to Senator Ladema's question about those detailed sketches and what have you, that is the government which gave out that information to attract investors. I want to read for you a definition of the, in the law of what the PPP, what a privately initiated, a privately initiated proposal, that's under section two of the act, means a proposal that is originated by a private party without the involvement of a contracting authority and may include information that involves the complete evaluation of the proposal as if it were a bid. What you are telling us is not, does not conform to that standard. And uh, I would require the minister to sections 40, 41, 43, and 44 of the PPP Act to underscore what I'm saying. 
And I would also want to refer the minister to part five, to part seven of section 68 of the PPA Act 2021 on the establishment of the project company that states. You have told us here that you are, you are negotiating that the CEO of that company should be a Kenyan. Under the law, when you get to that stage, what does the law say? On the execution of a project agreement, the project contracting authority and successful bidder shall establish a project company in accordance with the company's act. So if you are at that stage, it means this deal has been concluded according to the law. And you are trying to run circles around this committee, which is not acceptable. I move on. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is a going concern. And the objective you have given us here is to expand the airport. And therefore, the project is initiated by Kenya Airports Authority and cannot be privately initiated. Thus, the project cannot be procured under Section 40, 41, 43, and 44 of the PPA Act. This particular contract, if that's the aim, should be procured through the comp competitive bidding under Section 46 to 63. Of the, PPA, of the PPP Act. The use of privately initiated proposals here raises a red flag that all we are, we, are, we are confronting us with is concealment of fraud. And this might be a major case of money laundering where a public project is being used to repatriate money that has been stolen from Kenya in the guise of developing the airport. I want to, I don't care if you allow me some time, I spent a bit of time reading through the document. All right. So, the use of this PPP in the Adani case is fraudulent. The process does not meet the requirements of section 40, 41, 43, and 44 of the act. And I just, just, given time, I just want to, I'll jump through some of the things I wanted to say and just go to the key issues. I would like us to look, if you look at, uh, section 40, Forty-one, section forty-one. I'll go to forty-one. I'll jump forty. I'll go to section forty-one. Yes, forty-one A has an express requirement that you have not fulfilled. It requires that the, co the directorate, in coordination with the contracting authority, shall before commencing an evaluation shall before commencing an evaluation. You are telling us an evaluation is underway. You are even doing due diligence. But the law says before commencing an evaluation of a privately initiated proposal, you shall conduct due diligence to confirm that the private party has not been debarred by any country or any international organization from participating in public-private partnerships or similar arrangement, is not corrupt, has not engaged in acts of corruption, and has not been sued or convicted on account of acts of corruption. It's a requirement of the law. Before you touch anything they propose, it is supposed to, under 741, you have to demonstrate that the, the, the group is tax compliant in all jurisdictions where it has operated or operates. You go on and says, the entity has not, and its directors or officers have not been convicted of any criminal offense related to professional conduct within a period of five years preceding the submission of proposal and have not otherwise been disqualified pursuant to administrative suspension or debarment proceedings. 
So, all these things that I mean that I have tried to highlight out, but the, the, just to leave it up because of time, I would have expected you before you, you began addressing this Honorable Senate, Committee of the Senate, to first of all justify why it is you, a Minister for Transport, who is answering matters on PPP. The letter was addressed to Mr. Mudavadi. At that time, he was, he was covering the entire cabinet. Who was the minister responsible who should be answering these questions? Is it you or the minister for finance? You are a stranger in these proceedings. The minister to answer these questions is the minister for finance, not you. You are not recognized in law. And so, secondly, I would have expected the answers to begin by showing that there was this due diligence carried out and the Adani was cleared before the government went further to begin looking at them. <laughs> Secondly, there's a requirement in the law that you must prove that public, that competitive bidding could not, if, could not give us a bidder. It must be that Adani is bringing something so unique to them that you must go the PPP way. If, if competitive bidding can, be, can realize the same, pro, same result, you are supposed to do competitive bidding. Where is the proof that only Adani can, has the technology or the int whatever to, to, to expand an airway or the capacity? So you needed to justify that competitive bidding was ruled out. The default for public procurement is competitive bidding. So your initial suggestion that the PP, the public Public, the Public uh, Procurement and Asset Disposal Act was like sidestepped by the PPA. It's not true. The PPA is just stands on the Public Procurement Act to advance its cause. So I put it to you that you are trying to scam us in your response. You have no standing to address this committee. And I would ask the chair to demand that the Minister for Finance, who is the, who is the entity re recognized by law under the PPP, comes to address this committee on the questions we have asked. Thank you, Chair. Thank you I very much. Uh, before I give the CS the, the opportunity to respond,